So what is the future of drones? An extremely open-ended question, I know. We've seen projects like drone delivery being talked about in the past five years more and more frequently. It's also difficult to ignore the use of drones in a military sense with the current situation in Ukraine showing how drones can be used in modern warfare. There's also the recent release of the DJI M30T, which is the first drone built purely to help save lives as opposed to taking them. As well as the use of drones for entertainment purposes with large scale light shows, getting the overall public and environmental nod over fireworks in recent years. The truth is, drones have endless possibilities, and the more we develop them, the further their capabilities grow, whether they be used for better or for worse. In this video I'm going to touch on both the commercial and the consumer potential of drones in the future. I believe recreational abilities of drones have not reached their limit but almost served their purpose. The biggest advancements are marginal flight times, a camera's sensor size and picture quality. These factors aren't going to change the landscape of drones or the world we live in as of yet. However, this video of the Jetson 1, which was released just over 6 months ago, shows how drones could grow in the consumer market. As well as the Jetson 1, you also have companies like Volocopter, who have created an 18 motor, 9 battery air taxi that had its first flight at the end of 2021. The German company that made this UAV, which stands for Unmanned Aerial Vehicle, plans to have it used at the next Olympic Games in Paris 2024. However crazy these videos are, and how they get you thinking that this could be the future with taxis on rooftops everywhere, you're probably asking the question, what's the difference between this and a helicopter? The answer is technology and the idea of autonomous drones. We have seen autonomous flights firsthand through the use of one of our drones, the DJI M300, where it can carry out missions that take over 30 minutes, know exactly where it is on a map through GPS and RTK and land exactly where it took itself off from. It is estimated that by 2040 the autonomous urban aircraft drone industry could be worth around 1.5 trillion which includes delivery drones, flying taxis, military unmanned aerial vehicles and industrial worker drones. As well as the autonomous capabilities there is the fact that it is of course fully electric. With the future of our planet constantly in the balance, the option of fully electric, autonomous taxis flying in the sky seems like a great solution to diesel fueled traffic in big cities. And it's a lovely thought, but the reason this is realistically so far away is the same reason that drone delivery is. The problem is both public liability and airspace. The truth is that it would be near impossible to set up a drone delivery service that can fully function in any city or suburban metropolis. You would have to consider airport airspaces and therefore you have to have drones fly around those restricted zones. But what if you live near the airport? This and of course the potential hazard of technology failing which is the one thing it can always be reliable for. It only takes one autonomous drone to fall out of the sky and land on someone and that would be that. As well as this realistically, people don't care too much how their food or packages arrive just as long as they arrive on time and in good condition. The biggest worry of an expensive package being up in the air is, well, it's up in the air and anything could go wrong. Don't get me wrong, in the future there will be a system that works similar to planes and helicopters in the sky. The UAV traffic management system in development is similar to traffic collision avoidance system TCAS, used in airplanes. As well as this, there may even be the ability for drones to talk to other drones to avoid collisions, but who knows how far away this all is. However, drone delivery is being used right now, but not for what you may think. Developing countries are where this technology can serve a purpose, as there are still more than 2 billion people in the world who lack access to essential products like blood and vaccines. A company by the name of Zipline has started off in Rwanda, where only drones have the ability to offer quick medical deliveries for much needed supplies. Supplies that have short shelf lives which often lead to waste. Through the use of fixed wing autonomous drones they are able to set up a fully functioning delivery system that is only growing. The truth is hybrid drones with both fixed wing and propeller capabilities are the future with long battery life and longer potential for autonomous flights. Which brings us onto the commercial capabilities as it's clear drones are at their best when serving an actual need as opposed to making life easier for everyday first world people. I believe there are three drones that show off the future of drone technology in the commercial world today. We'll start with the smallest and that is the DJI M30T, the first drone built specifically for public services. 
Before the extremely recent release of this drone, there were alternatives from DJI such as the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance, which does what this drone can do but in a much smaller scale. There's also the M300 when paired with the H20T payload which can do everything this drone does but is larger, much more expensive and isn't integrated with the same payload and streamlined system DJI have introduced with the M30. In short, it offers thermal imaging, an incredible zoom camera, a controller designed to be user friendly when wearing gloves, water and dust resistance and it has the ability to fit in a backpack unlike the M300. The price gap between using helicopters and drones is massive, from the initial cost to maintaining, training, deployment time and obviously no fuel. This will save public services thousands if not millions of pounds down the line. The next UAV is the Autel Dragonfish. This drone relates to the hybrid of fixed wings and propellers that I was referencing earlier, otherwise known as VTOL. VTOL stands for Vertical Takeoff and Landing and it can be seen in the world of aviation with military style jets. The magic of this is it allows the UAV to take off without a landing strip and also have the ability for much longer flight times due to it being a fixed wing drone. Similar to the M30T, this drone will be used for public safety as well as forest fire prevention, power line inspection, traffic law enforcement, coastal patrol, security and agriculture monitoring. The uses are endless. The main selling points are the flight time with the ability of up to 180 minutes in the air while traveling at a maximum of 67 miles per hour. As well as this it has multiple interchangeable payloads and three different versions so the people using this incredible bit of technology can tailor it to their specific needs. Finally we have Prometheus, the biggest of the three with the largest capabilities. This is a drone we know well as we have been out to Poland to test it ourselves and we work closely with the company to enhance its commercial growth. This drone is bigger than a person and it has some awesome features. It has a 3-5 to five hour non-stop flight time, it's water and dust resistant with an IP55 rating, it has a heavy lift capability for heavy loads so it could carry out similar missions to zipline in Rwanda. All this as well as a built in parachute as a safety precaution and its own trailer. It can do everything the two previous mentioned drones can, and more. With so many potentially large UAVs in the sky, which at the end of the day are vehicles, there are also needs for safety precautions carried out similar to cars and planes. We carry out drone MOTs for mountain rescue drones here in Scotland once a year, and this could very well be a regular process going into the future, with more uses and more UAVs in the air growing yearly. It is estimated that by 2030 there will be over 76,000 drones in the UK, with the majority being deployed for defence, health and safety in the public sector, and agriculture, mining and energy in the private sector. But as is often the case with technology that advances so quickly, the safety rules and regulations are slower to catch up and figure out a way for this growing industry to thrive. Unless we get more fluency and face-to-face -face time with civil aviation authorities and develop the rules on obtaining beyond visual line of sight access, then we can't see where the future can truly go or how soon it will be here. However, we are slowly starting to be granted access to drone ports and highways in the UK, so it's definitely not as far away as you might imagine. Another important factor with the increase in drones in our daily lives is privacy and how the public may respond to all. People don't want to be closing the curtains on constant drones buzzing by or feel like they are being watched, so that is definitely something to consider as the technology advances. There is no doubt that drones right now, and in the not so distant future, will serve a purpose in sectors like public safety, agriculture, construction, disaster relief, and possibly even transport on a very small scale. The benefits will be an increase in productivity, speed in healthcare emergencies, as well as safety and even new jobs in the expanding drone economy. But how they fly, where they fly, and what they're being used for are all problems to be solved. Here at Edinburgh Drone Company, we are all for the exciting future of UAVs as well as contributing to it, and will certainly enjoy watching the progress over the next 10 to 20 years. If you like this video, please remember to subscribe and check out lots of other videos on the channel.